Hi Ben here and welcome back. Today we're down in the craft lab and we've just been going through some of our sort of woodenware that we've made over the years and realised like a lot of you probably at home we've got lots of spoons that you've made got to a certain stage and then they've started to be sort of dried out and you haven't quite finished them off so I've just realised there's quite a few spoons here that I've made over the years me and Lois have actually made from different bits of wood, cherry, some birch and even I think there's a few bits of damson and stuff in here as well. Now it's nice when you've finished your spoon and it's all dried out it's really nice to maybe spend a little bit of time doing a bit of embellishment or for certain you've got to make sure you put your mark on it because obviously that tells people in the future who actually made it so I normally put my little B on the back of it we've got some really nice spoons that we've got off friends and people that have bought tools from us so we've got a couple of nice spoons that came back to us made with tools that we provided to a chap out in Kentucky this is a, our friend called Rhett and he's actually put his little R on the back of these spoons so he sent one for me and one for Lois. So it's nice to have a little bit of personal connection. We've also got an amazing one that was made by our friend Adam Hawker. He's got some amazing talent and he does lots of really beautiful engraving and embellishment on his spoons as well. And we've even got one from, from Barn as well. So Barn the Spoon. So he's got his little bee on there. So I think that's a bit of birch by the look of it. So yeah, it's nice to go through the spoons, maybe clean them up a little bit when they've dried out and then you can start to think about marking them up and actually putting a bit of engraving on there. So I've got this really nice one that I did years ago out of a piece of hawthorn and I've put just a simple little design around the outside and I've actually added a little logo on there. Now that's actually a, a sort of runic sign for, the, for hawthorn itself so that's actually telling me what the timber is. Now you can engrave with a larger knife and you can just sort of strangle it up and use the tip of the knife to actually do the engraving but as you can imagine that's quite quite cumbersome and it can be quite dangerous so what I tend to use is one of these little antler engravers so this has got a blade that's very much like a little chisel like a little skew chisel and I can use that for engraving all my marks. I love this part of spoon carving you've done all the hard work you've done the axing you've done the main knife work and now it's time just to sit back and relax and just do a little bit of artistry just the fine finishing so you can just put your initial on the back or you can do all sorts of other different patterns on it or you could engrave the name of the person who you're going to give the spoon to and you can just relax and enjoy that part of it because there aren't any rules it's how you want it to be a little bit of uh, your own personality that tells the story of that spoon. And a book that we really enjoy is uh, Willy Sundqvist's uh, Swedish Carving Techniques. And we've, we've had this book for years and years. This is actually a new copy because um, the other one got worn out and fell to bits because we'd, we'd thumbed through it so much. Uh, and we reference it lots of times and we've taught a lot of people from this book. Um, there's lots of other books out there as well. Uh, and there are particular books on just the engraving as well, but this is sort of like a, a sort of everything to do with spoons book that we recommend. Um, so I just generally, on the back of my spoons, just put an L, which is really easy because it's just two straight lines, it's nice and simple. Um, if you've got something like Ben with a B, you can either get very clever and make it super cool, or you can just choose a symbol that might... Uh, you might like. Uh, somebody said they're sort of using runic symbols and things like that so something that means something to you. But yeah I enjoy just sitting down and just it's very relaxing and perfect for a Saturday afternoon. So like Lois was saying it's at this stage when you've finished your spoon and you've got pretty much like a whole blank area on your spoon handle and it's really nice to be able to embellish that with yeah somebody's name if you're going to gift it to them or just put some simple patterning on there. Now, I don't do, do any of the detail work like that when it's still green. Wait until it's totally dry, and then it allows you to then clean up the spoon if it's twisted or you've got dirty finger marks on there. But at that stage, you can then think about maybe just marking out your design. I normally just use a pencil at that stage. It's far easier to do your design work first with a pencil. It helps you see what you're doing. And obviously, if you draw it on and it looks rubbish, you can just rub it out and you can start again. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time marking out with a pencil and then we can go in and start using that little antler engraver. Now the advantage of using a short knife like this 
is having that very extended sort of tip to it allows us to get very nice detail but the, having that little stumpy handle it just gives you a really nice little grip it's almost like an extension of your sort of forefinger and you're almost going to be using the tip of that tool like you were the pencil for marking out the design so there's no point using a big big knife to do it um, so yeah one of these little antler engravers is really quite a tactile tool and just helps you put some detail, detail in, in there if you are very good at it, I'm no expert, I haven't spent enough time doing it, but you can actually use the sort of the chisel type tip of the tool to actually put little puncture sort of marks into the spoon itself and it adds a nice little bit of detail in without actually too much effort. But uh, yeah, now's the time to practice I think. So you can spend hours carving the spoon, you can probably spend even more hours actually doing that engraving work on the handle of the spoon as well. I always feel that it's almost like spoon graffiti. You've got this little blank space, so it's nice to embellish it with whatever you want to do, really. Now, I've only put a very simple border on this spoon. It doesn't stand out very boldly because obviously cherry's quite a pale timber, but you can always add a little bit of pigment to the oil before you oil your spoon, and that will really help those little engravings pop. I find just the dirt from my fingers from working in the workshop is enough to make those really stand out. So I've just added that simple border. I'm going to spend a little bit more time adding my maker's mark to the back of the spoon as well. But obviously you can spend hours practicing and getting really good at it. And if you feel competent, you could even use the same technique for doing some amazing embellishment like on this Sami knife that I bought out in Finland. This is quite incredible, the artistry that goes into the actual just the scabbards of the, the knives themselves and it's even been added onto the actual handle as well. So yeah, very, very technical stuff going on there and I don't think I'm at that level yet. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing what me and Lois have been up to this Saturday. Hope you're getting some good craft work done yourselves this weekend. And remember to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time for some more craft videos.